Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another TT review. Today I'm looking at an all new locomotive from Hornby. During my last TT video, I reviewed a train set from Hornby, and it was pretty good. If you're interested in how that went, I'll pop a link up there. Today, though, I'm going to try a standalone locomotive in the shape of this, the all-new Hornby TT Class A1 locomotive, the most famous A1, in fact, it is Flying Scotsman. Now, this on Hornby.com has an RRP of £145.99, or, if you're part of the Hornby TT Club, you can, of course, take advantage of that 15% discount, which makes this work out at £124.09. So, depending on which price you paid, this standalone locomotive only works out at £40 to £50 cheaper than the entire train set that I reviewed last time. And if you consider that the coaches alone are worth over £90 for just the three of them, then you realize how much more expensive it is to buy these items on their own. So today I'm gonna to be paying particular attention to the value for money of this locomotive. This effectively cost quite a lot more than the A4 from last time did, so I'm really gonna be looking for that value represented in the model. Of course though, this is an A1 locomotive, not an A4, so it doesn't have that streamlining, and of course in real life that streamlining hid quite a lot of the visual complexity of the locomotive, so there should have been a lot more opportunity to add detail to the A1 versus the A4, so I'm going to be looking for that. The A1 also has things such as a running plate, which hopefully on this model will be made of metal, not plastic. If it's just made of plastic, then for me, this is not gonna be great value. This has to be a premium model for this price. And if it's just plasticky, then the double O version is better. And I'll rather recommend that. But let's figure it out. Let's see what this is like. The all new Hornby TT A1. Come along with me, let's figure this out. So here is our first look at the Hornby TT standalone loco packaging. A little bit disappointed that they didn't just make this a miniature version of their double O packaging. I think that would have been really cool, but obviously it is necessary for Hornby to make these models look as distinct as possible from their double O counterparts. Otherwise that could create confusion further down the line, but still nice packaging. You've got the window through the front so that you can see the loco and we'll take a better look at that in a second. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the specific model I have is TT3004M. It is an LNER class A1 462, number 4472, Flying Scotsman, era three. And I think that is all she wrote. There is no more info on the box really. So let's jump in and let's see what you get for your money. I'm actually quite, yeah, I'm, I have been looking forward to this. Another TT Loco, I did enjoy the first. So I'm hoping to enjoy the second. Ah, this is interesting. So I do kind of get my miniature version of the traditional Hornby packaging. Yeah, this is just like a double O loco at this point. Yeah, that's cool. So you've got uh, an inner box with the blister pack inside it. There we go, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's have a look at the instructions. I think this is gonna be the same as the A4 we looked at. But there it is, just in case you didn't see it before. I'm interested to know whether the chassis is identical to the A4. That will be interesting to figure out. But yeah, a bit about lubrication. It's certainly showing the same chassis on this loco, but we'll open it up later on and figure it out. You've got very much the same accessories, so no difference there really. And just like with the A4, it looks like the decoder socket is in the tender. So you just pop the tender body off if you want to chip it and that's what you can do and that's pretty much all we need to see so let's have a look i have to say through the packaging this thing looks great so can't wait to get a proper look at it and to hold a tt a1 for the first time all right so accessories then again looks quite similar to the a4 we've got cylinder drain cocks vacuum pipes for the buffer beam and just a static molded plastic screw link coupling for the front buffer beam. So not too much for you to fit yourself. 
All right, let's finally figure this out then. What is this one like? Hopefully it will be even more detailed than the A4, like I say. All right, what's the finish like? Here we go, time for the reveal. Ooh, very, very nice. Yeah, look at that. I noticed on the footage, looking back at my A4 video, that the decoration was a little bit sloppy in places up close. So I'm going to take a much closer look at that today on this A1 and make sure that it's, you know, as it should be. But it does look good from a distance. Wow, yeah, that lining is superb. Right, let's lift it out then. Let's see what sort of construction materials this is made with. All right. So there it is. And yeah, feeling this, the body is plastic and the running plate is plastic. So that's a little bit disappointing. This is very, very expensive for its size. A bit of metal on here would have made it a much better quality model. In terms of the weight, I will pop it on the scales in a second and I'll let you know how it compares with the A4. In terms of the way the model looks though, absolutely tremendous. This does seem to be more detailed than the A4. The livery looks spot on, absolutely gorgeous, great finish, beautiful lining. Talk more about that in just a second. And the fidelity in the detailing at first glance looks to be just as good as the A4. And obviously I will show you a much closer look at that in just a second. And hopefully that will give us more of an idea of whether this model is worth the price. But first of all, let's have a little bit of background on the A1s, A3s and the Flying Scotsman in real life. What would eventually be known as the LNER Class A3 actually started life on the Great Northern Railway in 1922 when they were designed for mainline passenger work by Sir Nigel Gresley. They were built at Doncaster and they were then classified as A1 locomotives. The A1 was intended to perform the tasks that the ageing Atlantics of the Great Northern were really beginning to struggle with, namely the mainline express services for which much more powerful locomotives were quite urgently required. The A1's time with the Great Northern was very short-lived though, since of course grouping occurred in 1923, and then they became locomotives of the LNER, as we all know them. During the 1920s, Gresley experimented with various modifications and upgrades to his A1 design, which would be applied to all of the A1 locomotives over time, leading to their reclassification into LNER A3s. Flying Scotsman is by far the most famous member of the class, and it's possibly the most famous steam locomotive in the world. It set two world records, it was the first steam locomotive to reach 100 miles per hour officially, and it also set the record for the longest non-stop run by a steam locomotive at the time, 422 miles in 1989 across Australia. Of 78 produced in total, only one of these A3s remain in preservation, and it is this one the most famous of them all, Flying Scotsman. And of course, it can still be seen out there in the world today. So there it is up close and personal for you, Hornby's brand new A1 in TT scale. And as you can clearly tell, this is yet another beautiful locomotive from Hornby in TT. As I said at the start of the video, the A1 is a more visually complex locomotive than the A4, and sure enough that complexity is reflected in the model here. It has meant that Hornby have been able to add even more detail to this model versus the A4, and even more complexity. Obviously though, added complexity can come with added quality issues, and that is sort of true with this loco, although there are no major quality issues. I would say perhaps the level of finesse isn't quite as great as on the A4, but it's certainly not too bad. I think the biggest quality disappointment for me has to be the plastic running plate. Yeah, I think some die cast here would have made the model better quality, better value for money, and also a little bit heavier. This comes in at 141 grams, which is roughly 10 grams lighter than the A4 we saw last time. And 10 grams is quite significant at this sort of size, so a die cast running plate could certainly have improved the weight of the logo. Having said that, the running plate does seem to be fine in that it is straight, all parts of it that I can see do seem to be good and straight, so there's no warping or anything that I can see, although the join between the running plate and the cab doesn't look very good. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look great up close, does it? 
And there's a few other little bits like that. For instance, the dome on the top is clearly a separately fitted part. I assume that they've done that so that they can just easily create an A3 with this, perhaps with a banjo dome or something like that. But the fit to the top of the boiler isn't great. It doesn't really look like part of the loco. Similarly, some of the splashes, you can sort of see where they've been glued in place. Not that realistic. And things like the buffer housings are clearly not separately fitted. They are a part of the buffer molding, which has meant that they've had to be painted in situ. And as a result, the quality and the precision of the paintwork there leaves a little bit to be desired. Interestingly, you can see this molding mark, or maybe you can't see it, just behind the second band on the boiler here. That's where two different parts of the body appear to be joined together, but that is quite well disguised because it sits right behind that lining. A little bit less well disguised are the molding marks on the top of the firebox and front of the boiler. Those are really quite noticeable as well. Besides that, apart from a few flecks of stray paint here and there on the tender as well, I don't think the quality is too bad at all. The lining and such is much, much better. I mean, the precision in the lining on the boiler is, I would say, much better than on the A4 I looked at. That obviously more complex as well because it sort of follows around underneath the locomotive a little bit. You've got the washout plugs and such which are all beautifully lined and the side of the cab looks great as well with a little bit of printed detail on it. The running plate and underframe are also beautifully lined as well and the quality of this lining is all good. It looks particularly impressive underneath the cab. Yeah, very, very nice. And even the wheels look better than on the A4. They too are completely lined. The colour seems to roughly match the body, which is good. And you can see that the axles have been painted over this time. Not the case on the A4, so they look an awful lot better. The coupling and connecting rods, though, look about the same, I would say. About the same size. Not too bad, not far off realistic. Quite fine, I think, given how small this loco is. You've got the Flying Scotsman nameplate, which I think it might be a separately fitted piece, or it could be a part of the splasher. Here it doesn't look quite as good. That golden outline around the text almost disappears at the top, as though it hasn't been printed quite perfectly onto the piece. Let's take a look at some of the other detailing then. So the buffer beams are nicely painted. You've got the running number on there as well. And of course you have got these metal separately fitted buffers and although they are not sprung or anything it is nice to see some metal work here. The lamp brackets here are separately fitted as well which makes them stand out beautifully. Yeah really nice little details. You've got the little lubricator pieces again these seem to be separately fitted and separately painted which is very impressive. And then on the front of the smoke box you've got quite a bit of decoration here around the hinges. The smoke box dart is separately fitted, that is a separate piece. It does look a little bit chunky though, it certainly doesn't have the same finesse that let's say the double O version has. It does have the separately fitted handrail on the front, as does the side of the boiler. I think the ones on the boiler here might be made of metal or wire, but the other smaller ones around the cab and the firebox area, I think those are actually made of plastic, which makes a little bit more sense, I suppose, but they are a little bit more fragile as a result, so you do have to watch those. The running plate detail is pretty decent as well. You can see quite a bit going on here. A number of separately fitted rods and other parts. And over on the other side, you've also got a metal reverser rod there as well. So those are definitely quality features. The safety valves are quality as well. These are clearly made of metal. Very, very tiny little parts, but they do look a lot better being made of metal than they would being made of plastic. The whistle next to them is even smaller. I think that is just made of plastic, but it's so, so small that I don't think you can really begrudge them that. And then you've got the cab, which has some beautiful lining around its windows, which are, of course, glazed. The top of the cab is a little bit more simple than the double O cab. These vents are just part of the moulding and you can't reposition them or anything. But again, having moving parts there would look very, very chunky here at this scale. So no worries there. The cab detail is very, very much the same as the A4. Plenty of painted pipe work, more than enough to catch the eye here. Not quite at the same level as some double O scale locos, but it's actually not far off, which again at this scale is really impressive. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous loco. The finish on this thing is high quality, just as on the A4, and quite a lot better than the finish on some of my Hornby A1s in double O scale. 
Let's have a look at the tender then. Again, the quality of the decoration here is really, really good, particularly on the underframe where all of the axle box detail has been picked out. There's something bad going on around the back of the tender. It, I don't know if there's been some glue spilt on it or perhaps the top coat is not applied very evenly, but yeah, that looks messy. And also it seems as though the lamp brackets on the back here may just be a part of the molding. The molding is good and crisp, it looks fine, but they don't have the same relief as the ones on the front of the loco. Elsewhere though, the tender does look great. You've got these coal guards, which are really, really nicely done. Quite fine as well, yet again for the scale. The coal load itself looks good as well. It may be a separately fitted piece, but I'm not sure whether it's intended to be removed. It certainly isn't coming out very easily, so I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. But yeah, it looks good. Fair bit of detail on the top of the tender, and the front end of the tender looks pretty decent as well. Of course, you have got the TT scale coupling fitted to the back, and that worked pretty well on the A4, so hopefully the same will be true here. So overall, the level of detail is really impressive considering how small the locomotive is. Particularly impressive, I think, is the decoration. Yeah, that's been done really, really nicely, and the quality isn't too bad. There's nothing here that looks majorly wrong, and from a few feet away, this is gonna look just as good as the A4 did, even though up close, perhaps it isn't quite as finessed as the A4 was. Ultimately, the only thing that really disappoints me is the plastic construction. I think at this price, a bit more die cast in the bodywork would not have been too much to ask for, and it would have gone a long way to make the model feel better quality and a little bit heavier as well. And given how small and light these locomotives are, they are really crying out for a bit of extra weight, which would allow them that little bit extra traction down on the track. But let's figure out how this thing runs. Let's do a performance test. Let's have a look at the chassis. Let's figure out if it is the same as the A4 and let's see if there are any differences. Okay, let's get started. So there is the beautiful Hornby A3 in TT scale down onto the track, looking very good. The first performance test I have already filmed, and I will show you how that went in just a second. Next up, I want to talk a bit about the mechanism. Now, this does seem to have exactly the same chassis as the A4, so I'm not gonna go into masses of detail here. I will give you a whistle-stop tour, but if you want to know a little bit more about the mechanism, then check out my Easterner train set review. But let's go over it now. So you've got all wheels on the tender picking up power in addition to the loco driving wheels. So you've got a lot of pickups. You've still got this old and frankly very clumsy drawbar design with the big plug and the wire which reaches behind the rear loco pony wheels. This time that wire does not foul those wheels, they are free to turn, however they still do not turn when the loco runs on the track. They don't seem to have any pressure on them on the track so they just don't turn. The base keeper plate is fully removable, three screws and it comes off with no wires attached. You've also got the bearings of course on the driving wheels, a very impressive feature, and the spring-loaded contacts which electrically connect the base keeper plate's pickups to the chassis. For the body removal, you still have to remove the front bogey, and there's that piece of tape that people have been talking about. As far as I can tell, it does not do anything good or bad. It doesn't touch the wheels as it runs along. I tested that. I, at a guess, would say that that tape is there to maybe insulate the chassis from those bogey wheels. Maybe if the bogey wheels were to touch that, it could cause a short or whatever, but I did not put this tape back after the disassembly of my A4, and that never caused a short or anything, so you can remove that tape, I think, without causing any problems. It's got the same die-cast chassis. This is where most of the Loco's weight comes from because the body itself weighs just nine grams. The chassis even slopes down to fit into the A4 body, so it really is exactly the same as the A4. You've still got that three-pole motor without a flywheel, similar sort of motor as we found in the likes of the Hornby Peckets. Decent motors, really. Not a bad choice for TT, I don't think. The gauge is pretty much the same as the A4 as well, 10.1 millimeters back to back, which seems consistent across the different axles. So there you go, that is the mechanism. Yeah, it's nothing absolutely astonishing. There are no hidden features or anything like that but I think it's really all you could reasonably ask for at this scale. So with that, let me jump back in time for you and show you how that first performance test went. 
Moment of truth then. Let's finally find out whether this thing runs. I'm expecting it to perform largely very, very similarly to the A4, but then again, this will be a good test of the consistency of this chassis. Do they all run that way? So, not sure what direction I'm set in, but let's have its first ever run. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Forwards, I guess. And off it goes. Keeping it fairly steady there. Uh, it does work, and uh, it seems to be reasonably smooth at the moment. Okay, let's do a run past at 50% speed, and uh, we'll see if it's as speedy as the A4. Again, I'm expecting it to be. Yeah, fairly quick. But again, like the A4, it does seem to have fairly good slow speed control, so it's not like you have to have it racing along. You can just make an adjustment on your controller. Um, how's the torque? Let me put my finger there. This has not been running yet, by the way. We'll have to do that before I pass any final judgment. Yeah, that looks fine. Bit of a wobble going on with this back wheel, I suppose. Yeah, that doesn't look very stable, does it? The others look fine. And in fact, the back of the Loco seems to be wobbling a bit as it runs as well. So, hmm, doesn't seem to be affecting things too much, though. Okay, and even though it's not being run in, yada, 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 let's just do a little bit of a crawl just to see what that's like. The A4 was pretty good, if not outstanding. Let's see where this one lies. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good for the size. It is quite coggy at this speed. I'm not expecting a flywheel in this loco. Let's go a bit faster. Yeah, it's really not bad, really not bad at all. Obviously not quite living up to double O, but then again, there's a lot more space inside a double O loco. Uh, yeah, I think given the scale of this thing, the performance is quite impressive. And this just proves that there is the control down at the low speed. So even though the gearing means that by double O standards, at least this is quite a speedy runner. Yeah, it's still, ooh, still, a, good, still a good performer at the low speed. Not so much in reverse at the moment. Yeah, it's struggling quite a bit in reverse. Uh, I think the A4 was the opposite. I think the A4 was a bit better in reverse. But frankly, I'd rather them be better in forwards, and this one's pretty good. A bit faster. Yeah, they are nice and smooth in general. And uh, I guess next I'm going to have to run this in before I comment anymore, so we'll do that. Uh, noticeably, the tape is still in place on the chassis where the screw is and the wheels on the bogey are turning correctly so the tape is not affecting anything on this right running in here we go all right so yeah it is pretty quick i would say it's pretty much exactly the same in fact as the a4 fairly speedy at medium speed obviously in an ideal world the gearing would be a little bit better so that this ran at a more realistic half speed but this is so tiny that that is quite difficult to do. And the biggest redemption factor here is that at the lower speeds, it is still quite controlled and smooth. So performance, just as the A4 really, absolutely adequate and certainly not bad. So I'll give this 30 minutes forwards, 30 minutes backwards, and then we'll come back and we'll try it with some coaches. Okay, folks, that is running in complete. Yeah, it certainly is a speedy one, that's for sure, but a reliable one as well. No problems with this, no derailments, no funny noises, no nothing like that. So it seems like the A4 really good and reliable, quite speedy, but apart from that, a decent runner. Because of its slightly reduced weight over the A4 though, this is not such a good hauler. I measured 0.08 newtons of tractive effort, which should allow this to haul approximately 22 coaches on straight and level track. When I've got some more coaches, I'll try and test to see whether that is actually accurate but that gives you a rough comparative idea and when it is time to test the haulage of this i have got the three coaches from the easterner set up ready to go so we'll see how she gets on with those but for now let's have another look at the performance let's see whether it's any smoother now that running in is complete so let's try forwards to start with i think it was best in the forwards direction to begin with last time yeah not bad not bad at all. It's a little bit coggy. Can I go slower than that? No, not really. So that seems to be about the slowest. 
Little bit jerky, but not bad at all. Reasonably impressive for the scale. Is it any better in reverse? I concentrated on reverse in the running in. I gave it a little bit extra. And yeah, that's probably a little better, I would say. Still seems to be struggling more when the coupling rods reach the top of the wheels on this side. Let's see if I give it a nudge. So yeah, something a little bit sticky there, isn't there? But if I give it a little bit more, it does seem to overcome that. Um, but yeah, performance definitely not as good in reverse as it is in the forwards direction. Yeah, as you can see there, struggling a little bit. So it's not outstanding, but it's not bad either. And once we get to sort of these speeds, it seems to be pretty much okay in reverse as well. So it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Your mileage may vary on DCC, but here on analog on my Gage Master controller, it seems to be running very, very similarly to the A4, which is exactly what you'd expect. So yes, fairly consistent. Right, let's run around. Let's go on to the inside line. Let's pick up the coaches, check that the couplings work and check that the loco runs okay with some coaches coupled. So, just need to open up these points, those two, and let's throw the loco into reverse, and let's go and pick up some coaches. Here's a fun fact for you, I am yet to have a single derailment here in TT scale. I might have knocked some stuff off the track myself, but once everything is on and set up properly, I have never had anything derail. Not the coaches, not the locos. So I'm going to see how long that streak can last, and I will keep you up to date on that. Not a single derailment, and that's including the fact that the uh, the Hornby track doesn't fit together particularly properly. I seem to be trying to couple on a curve here, which isn't working. So, with that no derailment streak in mind, I'm going to be a bit more reasonable. And try and do this on the on the straight. There we go. So it's a bit like double O in that sense. Uh, if you're going to couple stuff together. Straight track is probably best. And has it worked? I think so. There we go. Right. So it seems to be fine on the second radius track as well. See how it goes on the points forwards. Yeah, absolutely fine. So for the time being, the streak continues. Let's go at about 30 speed. I think that looks good. So there you have it. The Hornby A1 in TT scale. It is perfectly good, I think, isn't it? It looks fantastic, just like the A4. The level of detail is comparable, very much comparable with double O scale, which is certainly not something that I was expecting when Hornby first announced all of this stuff. So that is a credit to Hornby. I particularly like the livery and the decoration. That is very, very impressive. And it is even slightly better, I think, than the A4 in that the lining is more pristine and the decoration and the livery is a little bit more complex on here as well. And this has not caused any quality issues in the model either. It's all done to a high standard. Same really with the detail, although the quality in some of the detail parts isn't quite as good. All in all though, I am more than happy with this. It's an excellent little loco, a good value offering as well versus double O scale. You get very much the same sort of loco here in TT as you do in double O, except it is more convenient and it's significantly cheaper as well. That's not to say it's particularly cheap for what you get. I do think it's a little bit on the expensive side compared with the full train set, but I certainly don't think the value is bad by any means. You actually do largely get what you pay for. Let's have some ratings then for the new TT scale A1 from Hornby. And already, even though this is only the second TT review, I've got something to compare this with now, which makes me a little bit more confident in my ratings. The level of detail then, I have given five star. Yes, this is an improvement, I think, over the A4. It is a more complex loco with more details, and it is improved in the sense that the wheels and the axles look a lot better. The axles have been painted over, the wheels aligned. That's even more detailed than on the A4. I've decided I'm not going to mark these models down for not having sprung buffers. I think here in TT, sprung buffers are even more useless than they are in double O scale. And frankly, to make these buffers sprung at this scale, they'd have to be much larger and chunkier, I suspect. I don't expect we'll ever see sprung buffers in TT scale, but if we do, then I will have to start considering that in my ratings. But yeah, it's five star, it's fantastic. The finish, the decoration, the level of detail, absolutely tremendous at this scale. 
the performance I've given the same as the A4. It is a speedy loco, but it does have some decent performance if you slow the loco down. At the very slowest speeds, these are not performing quite as well as their 00 scale counterparts, but you can get a reasonable crawl out of them on analog, and I'm sure on DCC they might do even better. The performance is certainly not bad. The pulling power is around 20% less approximately than the A4, 22 coaches on straight and level track, or 0.08 newtons of tractive effort, the A4 had 0.1, little bit weaker because this loco is a touch lighter but overall the pulling power is not a huge problem not massively impressive either i think if the loco was heavier it could be a lot better the mechanism for me is a four star just like the a4 it is very impressive what a quality mechanism hornby have been able to cram into this thing it does have the bearings it's got the spring-loaded contacts loads and loads of pickups nice die cast chassis it does, however, have a very inconvenient loco to tender drawbar and connector. Those are still not a great design, and it's still only got a three-pole motor without a flywheel, so it does lose a mark for those, but overall the mechanism is good. The quality I've given 3.5, a little bit less than I gave the A4 set. I think the build quality is fairly good. There's a minimum of visible glue and whatnot, and I do love the fact that we've got metal parts on here, such as the buffers and the safety valves. However, the body is very plasticky. The body weighs only nine grams, very, very light body on this one. A few parts look a little bit messy, such as the back of the tender, the nameplate and the dome. And there are also more visible molding lines on this body than there are on the A4. Slightly poorer in quality, slightly lighter loco, but not by much. Overall, the quality is still decent. Value for money then, I gave the A4 set five star. I don't think the value for money here is quite as good. It is a slightly more complex locomotive, but of course we don't get 90 quid's worth of coaches, we don't get a controller, we don't get any track, and this is only 40 to 50 pounds cheaper than that A4 set was. I don't think the value is bad, it's still a good 100 pounds or more cheaper than the 00 A1, but if you need the track and you want coaches, far better value to go for the set. The Flying Scotsman set is a bit more expensive than the A4 set was, but it's still better value, I think, than buying this stuff separately, so do bear that in mind. Overall then, that is 7.92 out of 10, slightly lower score than the A4 set, but still a fantastic loco. The grade is a B for me, and into the logbook it goes just below the Easterner set. Overall, I can highly recommend this. It's a great loco, easily as good as the A4, slightly better in some areas too. Really, really enjoyed looking at this one. Well folks, that will just about do it then for yet another TT review. Thoroughly enjoyed this. This is not just a fad for me. I think TT is definitely something that I'm going to enjoy going forwards. Now though, I'm more interested in some of Hornby's other models. These first two reviews have been quite similar in that they've both been LNER, they've both been Pacifics, they've both been Steam. I'm interested to see what some of Hornby's other locos and rolling stock are going to be like. I want to see a diesel, I want to see a shunter, I want to see something small. Can they get a decent mechanism into something even smaller than this? Are the little freight wagons going to be as detailed as the coaches? Yeah, I think we need to delve deeper next, try some different things, see what those are like. And as soon as Hornby comes out with some of that stuff, I'm going to be getting it and I'm going to be reviewing it. So stay tuned to the channel. If you're interested in this stuff, let me know and I will definitely do a lot more of it. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon with some more videos. All right. Cheers, folks. Take care.